So we've been planning this interview for quite some time. And, you know, lo and behold, as you come sitting at the Capitol, um, these protests have erupted in Israel, um, ostensibly about democracy. Democracy in Israel is being threatened. That is the, the mantra that we keep hearing. Um, this is something that you have deep knowledge about. So I think this is where we have to start. So what's happening there? Uh, so what's happening there is, as uh, sometimes happens, almost the opposite of what you would conclude by uh, reading the mainstream media. Um, there are serious challenges to democracy uh, in Israel, but there are challenges that come from the almost all-encompassing power of the court and government bureaucrats. And in the absence of the Constitution, the Supreme Court has taken for itself and for a cadre of government lawyers massive powers. For example, the Supreme Court has said that it can strike down statutes. Then they went on and even beyond that and said that they can block any government action that they don't think is a good idea. So they can set refugee quotas, they can control military tactics, and now, most shockingly, they've said they can even remove a sitting prime minister uh, absent any statutory impeachment provisions or anything like that. Um, and they've gone on to say that if the Knesset were to pass laws, to pass a constitution, they could strike down the constitutional laws as being against some higher constitution known only to them. In short, they have uh, said that they are the absolute final power over all government action uh, and over all matters of public policy in Israel. And what's additionally alarming and what makes the matters particularly intolerable is uh, these final judges of every democratic decision are not picked in any manner that is democratic. Indeed, they control their own selection. So unlike in America, the judges are not picked by the prime minister, the president, they're not picked by the legislature, they're picked by a committee that is controlled by judges. And needless to say, um, they are not going to pick people who disagree with them or who think they've wrongly decided any of their cases. They're not going to pick people who believe in judicial restraint. Uh, they're going to pick people who uh, basically are yes men to what they're, currently, uh, what they're currently saying. So what you essentially have is the supreme power in the state is held by a self-selecting group of people completely insulated from any democratic process. As a matter of fact, uh, they've also said that the attorney general, who's not a member of the ca cabinet, but is a um, really a officer of the Supreme Court, representative of the, uh, of the court in the government, can veto any government action. So if the government wants to um, hire someone, fire someone, or appoint someone to a committee, or take any single action, the attorney general can prevent it from happening simply by saying no, I don't think it's a good idea, without any legal rationale. And indeed, the Attorney General has currently said that the Prime Minister of Israel, who was just elected a couple months ago, is incapacitated and is not allowed to be involved in judicial reform because of some legal proceedings against him, uh, even though he was elected with the public being fully aware of these legal proceedings. They said now the Prime Minister of Israel, just elected, is not allowed to deal at all, is not allowed to talk about the single most important issue in the country. Uh, so in America, the president can fire the attorney general. In Israel, the attorney general can fire the president, the prime minister. So that is extraordinary. And what these reforms do is they seek to uh, put some democratic checks on this. That is to say, the system of checks and balances is very important. And in Israel, there are, there's currently one power with no checks on it. Uh, the court. And this is uh, the current proposal is to put a modest check, not take away the powers of the court, allow it to continue to uh, review laws, certainly allow it to defend minority rights, but not to allow it to pick its own successors, but rather have rotating governments, right wing, left wing, as the people elect them, have a primary role in appointing judges to the court so that it does not function as a kind of politburo selecting its own members and selecting its own successes. This seems like a pretty serious issue, what you've just outlined, right? So why is it that all of a sudden now this has come to the fore? One reason is that the, is that the court's power grabs have only increased in, with time. 
And if they had simply satisfied themselves with saying we can strike down laws as being unconstitutional if they violate minor minority rights, even though there's not a legal basis for that, nobody would have minded. But in recent years, they've made some fairly extravagant extensions to their self-proclaimed power, uh, including they've claimed to be able to remove the prime minister, uh, and they've claimed to be able to strike down amendments to the laws they previously said were constitutional. So they have now said that they can decide not only what the Constitution means, but what goes in it, uh, which is a fairly shocking aggrandizement of power. Um, and these efforts have been many years in the making. So um, politicians have complained about the court's overreaching power for many, many uh, years, uh, and uh, indeed have been trying to do, about, do things about it for a long time. Uh, but what they found is if you try to fix on a small level, it gets blocked. So the approach this government chose is to try to fix on a broad level. Another reason that it's right now is because Israel has had, a, you know, it couldn't really happen in the past six years because Israel has had five elections in six years, all of them caused by the Supreme Court, in fact, because the Supreme Court struck down a very important uh, legislative compromise between the religious and secular factions about um, army service. And in the absence of that compromise, there was just a cycle of uh, elections. And the Supreme Court also invented a rule that when you have a lame duck government, a government that doesn't have a majority support, it cannot take important actions. So the court, in fact, has been the government for much of the past uh, six years. And the government has been incapacitated uh, from dealing with major questions, which uh, judicial reform certainly would uh, would be. So basically, uh, the court has been resisting any kind of reform till now. Now, finally, there's a significant stable majority uh, in favor of reform in the parliament. The court has been basically, let's say, predictably uh, left wing in its rulings. Not always left wing, but you know, for sure, primarily favoring the left. So those you know, politically allied with the left uh, say, why should we allow these reforms? We have power now. Why change it? You know, yes, under the reforms, all parties would be able to appoint um, judges to the court. Uh, you know, the left would appoint when they get elected, the right would appoint when they get elected. But currently, the left thinks, under the current system, when we're in power, there's left-wing judges appointed to the court. And when the right's in power, there's left-wing judges appointed to the court. Why should we change that? That's great. Heads I win, tails you lose. It's fascinating to hear about this. Okay, um, from a very different perspective, this is actually very different than def than what the mantras that we're hearing, certainly in the legacy media. I can't help but think, you know, this is yet another example of this, I think of it like a propaganda information war miasma, you know, that almost any issue of significance becomes mired in, right? The thing that I find very interesting is there are actually recent revelations that there's even some U.S. funding of some of these opposition protests. And right. do you, can you clarify that? So the protests are extremely well funded and extremely well organized. And uh, you know there is a question where they get the money from. Um, I think it's completely legitimate for people to uh, protest uh, wherever they get the uh, money from. It has turned out that some of the groups uh, who are organizing these protests have received funding from the State Department in recent years. Now, those revelations have only shown a, a small amount of funding to those groups, but that's direct funding from the State Department, which raises the question of whether they've received also indirect funding through other groups um, that would be uh, sort of easier to conceal uh, from the State Department. But I think much more important than the funding is the fact that the United States is giving political support for the um, efforts to crush democracy in Israel, and by crush democracy in Israel, I mean insulate the Supreme Court as a permanent, aristocratic, democratically unchangeable body.